Okay, so in this video, we're going to do a quick walkthrough of an automotive workflow. If you're left handed, turn your controllers so the butts are facing each other and tap them once, and that will swap the controller set. Now, the first thing we're going to do is set up our environment. So let's press the blue menu button, go to settings, and turn on mirror, vertical lock, and world axes. Then we can go to the third tab and change our environment. There's a few presets on the very top row, and then there's custom in the bottom row. You can adjust HDRI and gradient, so give that a try. When you have gradient on, you'll have those three options for horizon. Just click it and adjust the color. Then you can grab the flashlight and change the lighting. And when you're done with it, grab it, hold it, and press the red back button to delete it and attach it to the panel again. Okay, next let's click Reference Images, and you'll see Images and Folders. So I'll toggle through until I find this car image. Then I'll reach in with the grabs here, grab, and pull the image into the environment. Press the blue menu button to close it, and you'll see the image isn't moving with me, and I want to anchor the image so that it moves with the axes. So grab it, hold it, and press the blue menu button to anchor it. Now we can scale it by grabbing it and using both grab triggers, and place it on the mirror plane. Nice thing about the images is if you just drag them over between two mirror planes, it will automatically snap. So we'll do that between Z and Y, uh, which is our mirror axes. Next, we'll click the blue menu button and go to layers. So as you can see on this first layer, everything is populated on it. And so we'll create a new layer here, name our first one reference images or refs and name the second one sketch. Now what we're gonna do is make sure that that eyeglass is on the active layer that we wanna start sketching on. So in this case, we'll put it on the sketch layer, and then I'll lock the reference layer and lower the visibility. Okay, now what we want to do is start sketching over top of our image, but we'll want to start by adjusting the stylus. So go left and right to adjust the size of the stylus. And if you've made a mistake, press the red back button. So in order to sketch on a flat plane, we're going to go press the purple tools menu and take a look at some of our tools. If you click a tool twice, you will get a menu. In this case, we're just going to turn on the planer tool. If you'll notice, the stylus is not connected to my controller anymore, but it is connected to that flat plane in the environment. And if I start sketching, you'll see I'm sketching on a flat plane. This is good, but we want to attach the plane to the mirror plane. To move the plane, hold in the pointer finger trigger on the left hand controller, and when you let go, you'll drop it in the environment. To snap it to axes, half hold the trigger and rotate your controller so it's parallel with the axes you want to snap to. For the mirror plane, we'll do that and then slowly move it towards the mirror plane and you'll see it snaps right into position. Now we can start sketching. But if you notice, this is quite uncomfortable. We can't rotate it so that it's at a more comfortable angle without pressing the blue menu button, going to settings, clicking sketching aid, and toggling off vertical lock. Now we can rotate this to be in a more comfortable angle and start sketching out our lines. So I'm not going to be too precious about these lines. I'm just going to loosely sketch out the side view so that we can continue sketching the design. In Gravity Sketch, generally, you want to get a loose sketch out to capture your idea and then going through the process is a matter of refining that sketch. Sometimes into a neater sketch, and sometimes into a sketch model or a full-blown model. So I'll go around here, capture the proportion, and some of the character lines. If you have a line that you want to edit, like this purple one here, reach out, grab and hold it, and press the blue menu button at the same time. This will put it into edit mode. You'll get a panel, and if that panel is a little too distracting, 
press the purple menu button. That will minimize and activate the panel while in edit mode. Then you can reach out and grab these edit points and move them around, delete them, or even add new ones. When you're done, press the blue menu button again. Okay, now that we're done sketching on a flat plane, we'll go back to the tools menu and turn off planer. Now what we want to do is extract our sketch in the x-axis to get an idea of some proportion. So you'll notice if I take the grab sphere and run it through the sketch, each of these lines is highlighting individually. To grab all of them, expand the grab sphere by going up on the joystick, and while holding that data, press the purple menu button. Now you'll notice everything highlights as one, meaning it's grouped. Now we could just grab the lines and pull them out in X, but it's not precise. To move things precisely, stack your controllers on top of each other and rotate them parallel to the axes you want to move in. Then highlight the geometry and you'll notice a line indicating that you locked that axis appears between your controllers. When that happens, hold the grab sphere and you'll be able to shift the geometry along an axis. This is called smart move. To duplicate and make multiples, press the pointer finger trigger on the right hand while doing this. So now we're going to grab, press the pointer finger middle trigger to duplicate, and drag out our side view sketch. Now we can get a rough idea for proportion, ungroup our lines, and shift in things like the greenhouse to get a better idea of proportion. So right now I'll use these lines as building blocks to get a rough idea of what the proportion for this vehicle is going to be before doing some loose sketching on top of it. Now this is just one of many methods of designing and sketching out cars in Gravity Sketch. Now let's click the blue menu button and lower the reference images visibility all the way. Now I can go in and delete some of these character lines on the side view in the center because we won't be using them. And even take some of these lines, put them into edit mode, and adjust them a little bit. Okay, now what we can do is take the ink tool and start sketching in 3D. So we already have it selected, so use both of your grab triggers to navigate yourself to a comfortable vantage point to start sketching different elements on the car. So you'll notice for the greenhouse, I'm navigating to a top view, rotating to a side view, constantly changing my viewpoint and scale for the most comfortable position to sketch my lines at. This is probably one of the most important skills in Gravity Sketch to get comfortable with. It will make you a lot faster and give you a better idea of what's happening with your design proportionally. Okay, so I want to take this one character line and shift it in X. I have it in edit mode and you'll notice it's not shifting in X. That's because planar is attached to it. If I turn planar off for that individual line, I'll be able to shift my points in all axes again. Now I can go in and refine this character line. And you'll see I'll do this for all the lines that have been created with the planar tool. Okay, so next we're going to start indicating some wheels with the ink tool. So let's open up the menu for the ink tool and turn polar symmetry up to the number of spokes that you'd like to have. You'll notice this works around an axis and you can position the axis by holding in the pointer finger trigger on your left hand controller. When you let go, you'll place the axis. We can also lock this to an axis by half holding the trigger and rotating the face of the controller to be parallel with the axes we want to lock to. In this case, I'll lock it to the X axis and adjust it slightly to place the wheel. 
Now I can start sketching out a few variations of rims. Again, these are all loosely indicated. If we want, we can go in and build these later with surfaces and volume. Okay, so it's made up of multiple lines. Let's grab them all, hold them, press the purple menu button to group them, and then use Smart Move to duplicate them over. Last thing, let's press the purple tools menu, go to ink, and turn polar symmetry back down all the way. Now that we have the wheels in there giving us a better idea of the proportion and stance of the vehicle, we can keep sketching character lines and flush out the rest of the design of the vehicle. Okay, so now we have a nice loose sketch, and actually something very useful is to turn on planar mode, and instead of using it on the center line, use it as a fishbone model, or a section line for the vehicle. So now we'll lock it between Y and X axes, and we can come in here and start sketching exactly what we want the surfaces to do, showing the volume of the car. Again, this is all in the spirit of getting a proportional model without doing any surfacing. And once we're done with one section, we could just shift it back further. And again, we are placing this by half holding the pointer finger trigger on the left hand controller and aligning the controller to be parallel with the axes that we are locking to. So once we have those section lines, let's go back to the ink tool menu, turn off planar, and then press up on the joystick on the right hand controller grab all of those sketch lines and change them together to a darker color. Now what we can do is a hidden line trick before taking screenshots and moving it to Photoshop. So press the purple tools menu and select the volume tool. Now the volume tool operates on the same principles as the ink tool. It uses a line, but instead of having an open line, it connects a volume between the line that you're sketching. So let's create a new layer here and label it filler. Let's make sure that the eyeglass is on it so it's toggled active, and then we can lock this sketch layer. And so what we're going to be doing here is taking the volume tool and drawing inside of the lines for the vehicle that we just made. So let's go around and make some rough geometry, fill in all the space in between the lines, and if you happen to have parts of the volume tool crossing over um, or covering some of the lines that you have, just put that into edit mode and shift around those edit points or delete it and try again. Again, we're just getting some rough volumes in here, something so that we can hide what's happening on the other side of the sketch. So when we take it to Photoshop, we can actually add some brush strokes over top of this and render out some of these volumes or make a sketchboard. Okay, now that we have our volumes, we can press up on the joystick on the right hand controller, grab all of those volumes, group them by pressing the purple menu button, and then grab them and change the color to white, grab it again, and change the material on the top row there to flat material. Now what we'll do is change the workspace. So let's go to settings, blue menu button settings, workspace. Toggle off gradient under custom environment and drag the color to be pure white. Now you'll see that our volumes are actually hiding the sketch lines that are on the other side of the vehicle, giving us a quick proportional model without doing any complex surfacing or even basic surfacing. This is a perfect workflow to get multiple angles of a sketch that you did in 2D once now uh, from every single angle.
So now what we'll do is take some screenshots. So let's press the blue menu button, go to save, and click the camera icon, which is the screenshot tool. Here you can adjust field of view with the vertical slider and depth of field with the horizontal slider. So now you can navigate yourself around to a bunch of different angles, adjust your camera, and press the blue menu button to take screenshots. So go around and take a few screenshots, and then we will exit Gravity Sketch and look at where we can access these screenshots on landing pad. All right, so now we'll press the blue menu button and click the floppy disk there and save our file. So just type in the name of your file and when you're done, press the blue check mark. And then let's go back to this menu and look in the bottom of the menu here. So you'll see save to the cloud and save locally. That file I just saved was saved locally. So we're going to flick the switch to the right and resave this file to the cloud. Then we can click exit to lobby to exit gravity sketch. Okay, so now let's grab those screenshots off of landing pad. So log into your landing pad account. If you can't find it, type in landingpad.me. And in the main menu here, you'll see a mix of a bunch of different files. So we're gonna use filter here, go to screenshot, click our screenshot, and then click download. And you can multiple select and click download, and that will save it out as a zip file. Okay, so now we have our screenshots. We can drop them into Photoshop clean things up, and make a quick sketchboard. And now you can continue with your normal workflow using the sketch model that we made in Gravity Sketch. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to email us.